Hello and welcome to this Sunday's Act of Worship. Um, it's a great privilege to be able to be in your home thanks to the wonders of technology. I know some of you are using technical things more than you ever imagined that you would be. And I know that there are others too who've continued to resist um, any kind of electronics. It was lovely last Sunday to meet with some people in the church building. But for the time being, and particularly as Wirral's um, risk to uh, infection grows at this time, we will continue to record our services online. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We come together from scattered lives to meet with God let us take a moment of silence to recognise his presence with us now. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship him together. And we do so with our first song. It will be familiar to some, but less so to others. Above all. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you were.
Dejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all Now we come to our confession Time in our service where we say sorry to God Sorry for those things that we've done and that we shouldn't and those things that we have uh, forgotten to do that we ought to have done and the stuff that doesn't even immediately come to mind but God knows and it forms a barrier between our relationship with him. We have not always worshipped God our creator. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We have not always followed Christ our Saviour. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit our guide. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And now may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now my dad, Jack, uh, is going to read for us from Matthew's Gospel. A reading from Matthew chapter 18. When Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wants to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused instead. He went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the reading from Matthew today uh, deals with forgiveness. Uh, Peter asks Jesus how many times we should forgive someone as though it's a, a mathematical equation that needs sorting out. It's just as well forgiveness isn't about maths or I would probably be really stuffed. So he says how many times? Seven times? Seventy times? Seven? And Jesus is, says to him, no, we don't do it like that. And he tells him a story. He tells him about the man who doesn't look after what the master has given him. And when the master comes back, uh, the money and I guess the land and everything else has been squandered, abused, misused. And the man is repentant. He begs the master to think differently of him. Instead of punishing him, he, he wants to be forgiven. He wants to be given the opportunity to put things right. 
And the master, who is a kind and generous and loving man, takes pity on the one before him. Perhaps he understands something of the inexperience or the difficulties that he had in doing it. Perhaps the master anticipates something of the position he was placed in and the pressure from others. We don't actually know. But the master says to him, I will let you off the punishment. I will clear the debt that you owe me. Go and be free. And he goes. And then, uh, away from the master, he meets a slave who serves him, who owes him a great debt. And you could almost imagine the end of the story. What should happen is that the one who'd been forgiven forgives his own slave. But he doesn't. Instead, he wreaks punishment over him. He gets angry and throws him into jail for the failure to pay the debt. Now, this uh, parable is a, a reflection of the way that God deals with us. We are like the first slave, the one who uh, is forgiven. The master we can think of in terms of God. God comes to us, we who have huge debts to pay, and he forgives us. When we turn to him and ask for that forgiveness, recognise that he is Lord of all, and say we are sorry for the ways in which we've ignored him, for the things that we've done, for the things that we have not done. When we ask for that freedom of our sins, God gives it to us because he is loving and generous and gracious. And he wants us to stand tall before him, not to grovel on the floor, not to be burdened by the debt that we cannot pay. And then we can think of ourselves as the one who has been set free. And what should we do? We might imagine that because we're set free, what we do to those who wrong us, those who owe us, those who have an impact on our lives, which is hurtful and negative or difficult. Because we have been so forgiven, we are able to forgive them. But it doesn't work like that. So often, first of all, we don't recognise the way in which God has forgiven us. And secondly, we don't choose to forgive people around us in the same portion. We will say the Lord's Prayer today, and just as we often do, it doesn't matter which version it is. Forgive us our trespasses, or forgive us our sins, or forgive us our wrongdoings, or forgive us the things that we do that are against you, O Lord. That's what we ask for. We ask for God's forgiveness. But then we say, as we forgive those who sin or trespass or wrong us. So in the proportion that we give, the forgiveness that we give to others, will you give to us? I am so thankful that my God is all loving, all generous. I'm so thankful that even though I'm not always good at forgiving things, uh, he continues daily, hourly to forgive me. Now, some of us will have learned the idea, forgive and forget. That's not very helpful when we think about forgiveness in the context of the Bible. Jesus is not asking you to forget the wrong that's done to you. Forgiveness is about clearing a debt. It could be financial or it could be a time. It could be anything that, that we feel someone is owing us. We forgive them. We let them off. We set them free. It's also putting to one side a hurt that has been done to us. Perhaps something that someone has said, a, a particular way in which someone has acted that has been deeply hurtful or unkind to us. God knows that forgiveness is hard. That's in a sense why this story is so powerful. It is not an easy thing to forgive. But be assured, forgiveness does not 
mean forgetting and what we need to do is to think instead of little chunks of the bible we need to think about our god as a whole and the bible as, as a narrative that runs and therefore we need to think about forgiveness in the fact that we have a god who judges he is all judging all loving and all merciful uh, but he doesn't just uh, allow people to get away if they have wronged him or one another that's what a just judge, judge does. He is fair. He weighs the balance so that things are equalised. So the end of the parable, Jesus explains that God will, to those who do not forgive, treat similarly. So if you do not forgive your neighbour, you will not be forgiven. If you do not free others from the debt that they owe you, you will not be freed. At the end, there is a just judge who will give out in measure to us uh, those things that we deserve, although we do have an all-loving God. We know that. But sometimes to love is to be firm, to be fair, to take into account all that people have done and not down. We know that as parents. I've said that before recently. And we know that there are times uh, to love is something that we do open heartedly and generously. And it's a great giving of self to others. But sometimes to love is to challenge with words. At the root of forgiveness is love. We can only forgive in God's strength, in his power. It is not easy to do it on our own. And I often think forgiveness can be a bit like an onion. It's something that uh, you do, you do once off, you, you let that debt or that hurt go. And then one day uh, you come and you realise that there's another layer that needs peeling off. You need to, to, to meet that thing again and to let it go. Or uh, like a ring on a table, you polish it and you get rid of it. You put that uh, tops on it or whatever you use to get rid of any marks on the table and it's gone and it's a wonderful feeling but one day you're sitting there and it's back again and that doesn't mean you allow it to pull you back down you move forward you let get rid of the mark you get rid of that thing which is hurting you whatever it might be you see the thing about unforgiveness is it pulls down it takes backwards the one who cannot forgive. Um, there is a story about the woman Corrie ten Boom, a quite famous missionary. Um, she is Jewish and she was um, in Germany during the war and she was held in a concentration camp. And later in her life, she went round and she gave various talks about what it meant to be a Christian because she became a Christian and how God had helped her to move on from what had happened to her. And on one of these occasions, a man came up to her and he put his hand out to her and he asked her for forgiveness. He asked, uh, explaining that he had been one of the guards in the concentration camp. He had been one of the people that had wronged her and her family and her friends and her whole community and culture. And in that moment, Corrie Ten Boom said she didn't want to hold his hand. She didn't want to forgive him. But because of that not wanting to, she knew that she had to. She needed to put out her hand to him and begin a process of change. Why? For him, to love him, yes, but also to change her, also to enable her to be free of the bitterness that she realised in that moment she still held against him. When you forgive someone, you don't necessarily lose all the anger or the hurt or the pain in one go. When you forgive someone, it does come out of love and it comes out of a relationship that you have with Jesus. It also comes from a place of knowing that unfortunately, even those of us who like to think of ourselves as good and kind and caring, still need God's forgiveness. We still do not live in the way that he has called us to live every day of every hour. We still don't act with the generosity that he does towards us. So this week, 
Uh, I want you to think about any relationships in your life that are unforgiven, undealt with. Maybe you need to write a letter. Maybe you need to sit down before God and pray about something. Maybe you need to speak to someone, make a phone call. Whatever it is, whatever it is that holds you and the other person apart, deal with it today. Because actually it's not just about you and the other person. It's about your relationship with God. And remember, as we say the Lord's Prayer today, forgive us our trespasses, our sins, in the same portion that we forgive others. Have a great week and I'll see you next week. Amen. So let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins. In accordance with the scriptures, he was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. And now Ros is going to lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. In this season of creation, the response to thank you for your great generosity, Creator Father, is we praise and thank you. Thank you for your great generosity, Creator Father. We praise and thank you. We thank you for our education system, enabling those with children, grandchildren, nephews and nieces to return or start new schools. In the large and frightening world that is outside their normal routine, we pray for the teaching assistants, the pupils, the teachers, the catering, cleaning and caretaking staff, and all who work in places of education, that they may work in safety. Thank you for your great generosity, Creator Father. We praise and thank you. We thank you that we now have the choice of eating out and meeting friends and relatives. We pray for those who grow, harvest and prepare food, those who deliver to restaurants, cafes and pubs, those who cook, clean and serve. Thank you for your great generosity, Creator Father. We praise and thank you. We thank you for the gift of freedom that we may slowly return to shopping and ask you to give those who tentatively venture out of the safety of their homes courage to face a new and changed world. We pray for those who continue to serve in supermarkets, markets, shops and those who drive buses, taxis and deliver food. Thank you for your great generosity, Creator Father. We praise and thank you. We praise you for the diversity of this earth and thank you for the warm zephyrs that gently blow, the icy winds that buffet us and nearly knock us off our feet, for the gentle trickle of meandering streams, to the might of rivers as they crash into the sea, for the beauty and delicate gauze of a butterfly's wing, to the rough coat of a scavenging rat. Thank you for your great generosity, Creator Father. We praise and thank you. We pray for those who are returning with trepidation to jobs and those who no longer have jobs. May they find a way through the gnawing fear that presents itself each morning. We pray for those no longer in the safety and security of temporary accommodation, that they may find accommodation and employment that gives them hope. As the R number continues to rise, we pray that those who choose not to abide by the rules, that they will see sense and wish to help all of us to live in safety. We think of the migrants on Lesbos, now without tents, sleeping in fields, under hedges and anywhere they can find shelter and pray that the islanders will show kindness and generosity to those with nothing. 
We pray for those anxiously awaiting results of tests, those undergoing new and frightening treatments, the anxious, the depressed, those who have lost hope. We pray for those who have recently died, especially remembering Joyce Hughes and her family, Viv, Jackie, Stephen and Terence. May they know the peace of your eternal and enduring love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect for this, the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together now in the words of the traditional Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we join together in our final hymn, And Can It Be? And can it be?
Jesus Christ has sent us all into the world to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news that we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. And finally, may the hope of God fill us with all joy and peace in believing and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and have a really great week. Amen.